Blitzkrieg Bricks book. Blitzkrieg Blitz book. Blitzkrieg. Your turn. Welcome to Brickmania TV. <laughs> All right, uh, <clears throat> welcome back, Brick Maniacs. We have a very special episode, very long awaited. We have an all new book out for you right now. Right, the latest, the latest and greatest book from Brick Mania. What's this book called, Dan? This is called Blitzkrieg Bricks. Yes. Um, it is a building instruction book, basically the early part of World War II in Europe. Uh, Blitzkrieg refers to the style of warfare used by um, the German armies uh, at the onset of World War II, basically lightning warfare. Um, Blitzkrieg. So the idea being that you would overwhelm your enemy with speed, ferocity, and uh, basically multi-prong attacks. So you'd have a pincer attack, you'd have attack from both sides, you surround chunks of your enemy and destroy them, uh, encircle them and destroy them. You'd attack from air, sea, and land at the same time simultaneously. Basically shock your uh, enemy into submission. And it was very effective for the first part of the war. Sure. So. Um, so now, yeah, you have you have a. Uh, uh, assortment here of vehicles that would be uh, involved with right. the beginning of that. As with most Brickmania books, the the theme of this book uh, is it, it is a themed book. It is a Blitzkrieg. Um, most of the models were appeared previously as kits of Brickmania. So over the last few years, we've released um, most of these are pretty recent. Actually, the last two years we released most of these as kits, or at least half of them. Um, so over here is the German side. Basically, we have. Uh, the German models. I can go through them if you if you want to yeah. know what they are. So um, this is the this is this is basically we have a half track here. It's a it, SDKFZ uh, eleven. It's a prime mover basically. Um, Sonderkraftwagen, something like that. Um, don't know my my my. They, you know we 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 uh, uh, shrink down these German words because they're just too long <laughs> to, uh, to to <laughs> to know. So I guess it, it makes sense in German. But you basically have this this prime mover half track. Um, this particular version has little ammo storage bins, and you have the light field howitzer. This is a 105, I think it's a 105. Uh, let's see, it says right in the back of the book here. Uh, it just says light field howitzer, but it is, I think, I believe this is a 105 millimeter howitzer. Um, has these cool deployable, you know, tails. So basically, you set it up. Your, your gun crew comes out. You get your ammo out of the thing, and vice versa. So you have the the, the half track, and you have a flak. I think that's a flak 38. I can't remember. There's so many models, and this book's been compiled over such great time. Flak 38. Should point out that the, the book is just instructions. Mm -hmm. You get the parts list and the instructions. So you'll know what you need to make it, and you do get this awesome sticker sheet, which I'll get to later. Um, but you're basically, you're not going to have figures in it. If you're going to want to make an army, we do sell figure packs yep. uh, for the for the you know, a sticker pack for figures. You can get your own figures, do it. Um, we basically limited the stickers mainly to a, t a, a, a token example, and uh, you'll have to get your own packs. Um, but this is the Krupp Proxy. This is a prime mover from early in the war. Um, it's a little like a you know two by six truck. Uh, the Germans used them extensively throughout the early part of the war. And of course, we have the Panzer One. This one, actually, this model here, uh, is designed by Yitzi. So you do have a little bit of assortment. It's not just my models. It's some of the the in the greatest hits of the Brick Mania team for the last year or two. Panzer One, and then you have a Panzer Four. This is the early war version with the uh, short barrel, uh, short barrel howitzer, 75 millimeter gun, and a, the single the single hatches on the side of the of the the turret. You know, it does have all the usual features you'd expect from the. Panzer IV, the antenna goes up and down, you know. Yeah, and, and since a lot of these were kits, we also do have full review videos on, on some Right, of actually, models. yeah, you can you can go back and, and, and Google them as well, mm -hmm. go through the YouTube. And of course, this is orig this is Cody's original Stuka, um, JU-87 Stuka dive bomber. Um, we're releasing a German air, air crew pack, aren't we? Have we already done that? Yep, it's it's in the works. If it hasn't nope, come out, German air, the German the sticker pack for the German air crew should be out right now. Right. Oh, that's awesome. So right. you, if you if you, you, the the book will come with the stickers to basically essentially recreate this model, but if, uh, does not come with the, the stickers for the the, the crew just because the sticker sheet doesn't have room for that. Right. Uh, but this is classic. This is this is you know Cody's first uh, Stuka. Mm -hmm. He has a newer one out. This is the early war version with the yellow nose and everything. So then let's go through the rest of them. Sure thing. On the Allied side. So basically, these are the victims of the Blitzkrieg. So we'll start out. This is a, we have a couple of British entries in here. These are from the British Expeditionary Force. So we have the light tank Mark VI. We also, with its matching counterpart, this is the cruiser tank 
Mark IV. Uh, so when the, belt, the British Expeditionary Force went to France to help uh, turn back the Germans in the, in the invasion of France and Belgium, they sent these, or they're already there in, in great numbers. And these are the two most common tanks that were in the British Expeditionary Force. Of course, a lot of them were destroyed, mm -hmm. or abandoned at, at Dunkirk when the, the British Expeditionary Force was forced to uh, withdraw. Um, Is this guy the Sharpie one? Yeah, let's oh. go. We got a whole bunch of French. Here's the exhaust. I'll hand yeah, it. yeah, the, the exhaust. This is this, the, the classic French Char B1, Char 1B, I guess, this. So the German, or, or French, the French entries here, we have a French heavy tank, the Char B1, Samois S35, mm -hmm. uh, there's another one, Renault R35, and then the, uh, I think this is the FCM. This is a, this is actually a really advanced tank, FCM was a light tank, really remarkable in the fact that it had all welded armor way ahead of its time. So there was no rivets. One problem with a rivet on your armor is when you get hit by an enemy shell or something, those rivets tend to pop out and bounce around inside the tank. It's called spalding. Um, sometimes it'll happen when you're, you know, a shell hits the armor hard, hits the side of the armor hard enough, pieces of flex of, of metal will go flying mm -hmm. around inside the tank, causing blindness or other injuries to the, the occupants inside, potentially set you on fire too. Dang. So yeah, so this is cool. This FCM has never been released as a yes. kit before. Uh, neat little kit, or neat little model. And I should also point out that the... Uh, I think there's, yeah, there's quite a few actually here. That yeah, the first was two British tanks, the cruiser yeah. and the uh, the light tank, the Vickers light tank here, have never been released as mm -hmm. kits before. You don't get the guy, this is just a British guy that we stuck in there, British tanker, you can stick her back separately. Mm -hmm. um, so let's go down the row here. So more in the Western front, let's just we'll continue. Oh wait, wait, we have this cool little French gun. Ah, yeah, yeah. So this is the famous French 75, except between the wars, they made this really cool anti-tank version that if you can see how when the tails split, those wheels become shields. They actually armored the. That's fairly clever. They armored the wheels to give the, you know, the, the the operators of the gun a little bit of extra protection. Of course, if you're an anti-tank gun, you're gonna the, the tanks will be shooting back at you, and those shields will help uh, protect you from you know fragments of splinters, metal from uh, shrapnel and whatnot. Um, this is actually quite a rare gun. This was kind of a late development. Of course, as as things weren't. The, 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 you know, the, it's really hard to convince the government to like, hey, let's arm because the Germans are arming and, and the government wants to like enjoy its sense of prosperity. So they didn't make too many of these. Um, quite a few of them actually went to Poland and the Russians captured them and used, uh -huh. the, used them against the Germans uh, again. So they, <laughs> it, they did last throughout the war. The one thing that the Russians did do is put pneumatic tires on them. I think the Poles did as well. Um, so now we get into some of the other, this is, this is the Panzer Wagon. It is a Dutch armored car. Um, I didn't really know that this was such a thing. This is a brand new model we made just for the book again. Mm -hmm. um, John Canepa made it. This is a, a, a Dutch armored car. Um, it's most famously used by the Germans, actually, because the, the Dutch you know, uh, ended up, they, they did fight valiantly against the Germans, but were overwhelmed. And a lot of these vehicles were uh, captured by the Germans and then mm -hmm. used as security vehicles. So you, you very rarely see them with any Dutch markings, mostly see them with German markings after they got captured. And the same with this. This is a Belgian, this is the, um, it's a Belgian tank destroyer. Is it the B1? I don't remember. Here we go. It's on the back. This is another one. John Kane put me this one. So Belgians, what is the, the T13 B3 tank destroyer. So the, the Belgians secretly made these tank destroyer. They didn't want to provoke the Germans, so to speak. So they made these tank destroyers in secret. Unfortunately, they didn't have enough of them or in, uh, in enough quantity of them or really have them made in time and, and tested in time uh, to be much of a use against the, the German onslaught. But uh, they did have them. The Germans ended up catch, capturing a bunch of them. Uh, again, the, they, you know, the, the Belgians really didn't stand a chance against the might of the Wehrmacht. Next up, do you want to go over? Sure, we got a couple Polish things here. Tank it. Yeah. Tank it. Tank it. We have a French soldier here. You'll have to build your own French soldiers. So that's the 7TP. Um, there are a couple of tankettes. So the tankettes were actually based on the British Lloyd carrier. Um, the, the Poles made their own design. That has a 20 millimeter cannon on it. And then this here is the, this is the 7TP tank. So it means it's, the, it's a seven ton light tank, a Polish light tank. Uh, basically another, it's, a, it's, it's based on the Vickers light tank. Same thing as the, uh, the Soviet T26, also based on the Vickers tank design. Yeah, very so similar. British six, I think it was called the six ton light tank. Right. Uh, so. Cool, and another little guy. Now the last little guy, this is actually a German one. This was this escaped the German pile. That's a little 75 millimeter regimental gun. So 
uh, when the infantry was attacking, this is like a small little support gun. You, you see a lot of these, uh, they must have made thousands of them because I see a lot in the, the recreator or the, uh, the um, um, yeah, sort of reenactor community. I've seen a few of these in, in, in sure. various reenactments. So th it's kind of like the common, must have been the common gun for both the Wehrmacht at the beginning of the war. And then, uh, of course, they've, they've fallen into collector's hands and I see them all over the place. Right. So, and we have one last little gun, this one. I can't remember the name of it. It's, it is actually a, it is a Krupp created gun. This is a German gun, but it was used by the, bought by the Norwegians. And the original guns had these big wooden wheels, spoked wheels on it. So they're kind of made after post World War I. Uh, prior to World War II, they started converting them to pneumatic tires. Uh, they did use them against the Germans. Um, I mean, I, that's one of the things that you don't really hear a whole lot about. But the Norwegians, even though they were overwhelmed by numbers, they did fight uh, the Germans. Didn't, div didn't give up a, a whole lot of territory freely to the Germans. They made the Germans fight for every inch mm -hmm. of it. A few of these guns were actually captured by the Germans during the, during the war. And uh, you'll see them. Uh, they were given to the Finns, who used them against the Russians. Wow. <laughs> so they, they did fight on until the end of the war with some of these guns. Uh, but you, they're very rare because there wasn't very many made to begin with. Right. Wow, this is quite. Maybe we want to go over all the brand new ones. Get those lined up here. Just so, well, just all yeah, the all the brand kits. So yeah. the ones that are not Brickmania kits yet, <laughs> they probably won't ever be. Uh, yeah, we're kind of like one of these things. Once it gets released as a book, chances are we're not going to release it as a kid or, or restock it because there's just so many other new things that we want to so go through. So much cool stuff out there. Yeah. So these are all the new ones. Never before get that yeah. this one. Oh, wow. we've All released, of these. We've released this before. Yeah, that was ancient. We, this came out, this was like a mini kit a long time ago. So there's quite the lineup of ex book exclusive right. stuff. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine exclusive models. If you want to know why the book took so long, that's it right that's there right because there. we had to develop it. <laughs> these had the same amount of development time as a normal kit would take. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, they're actually quite refined models, opening hatches, all the things that you'd expect from a, a brick mania right. model. They're not just there for show. They actually fully functional, um, you know, working suspension, things like that. So um, it's, yeah, I mean, you're, you're basically, the only way you're going to get these models, get the book, get some parts. Yeah. Uh, the book does have a parts list. You do have um, a visual parts list at the beginning. Let me find one here as an example. Yes. I should also point out that the book has lots of action shots in it. So every mo just about every just model. Just about every model, yeah. You'll have some sort of like one of our fancy action shots. The, the cover itself is a unique we made just for the book. So you have action shot, and then you'll have this awesome visual parts list that'll show you exactly what you need. So mm -hmm. this is for the whole model. This is the whole entire model here in visual. And then here it is per step. So when you're going through, if you're, if you're like, oh, I don't know which pieces, you can actually line up all your pieces ahead of time. And then in the back, we have this kind of, uh, it's basically an, uh, an appendix, so like an index with all of the parts you're going to need per model right. with the quantities. The numbers in there are parts numbers. And those so parts this is numbers. This hugely, hugely helpful when you're trying to get a hold of pieces. Right. If you, if you don't have most of the pieces and, and you want to go to, like, say, something like BrickLink, these numbers will generally correspond with the BrickLink numbers. Um, I should point out that it's not foolproof. Sure. Uh, the numbers do change over time. So when, you, when we buy the book, or when, you, when we release the book, we bas basically that you can go to BrickLink to punch in those numbers. It may, it may be show up as an alternative number, but you'll find it nonetheless. They do change over time, though, which is kind of frustrating for everybody, but we're, it's out of our control. Sure. Um, Lego usually doesn't change their part numbers. And on the bottom of a Lego brick, if you look really closely, there's usually a mold number or a part number on the bottom. That's what that corresponds with. But Lego does change them over time. Sure. But just for your information, a 2 by 4 brick is still brick 3001. Yeah. Trivia, little known trivia. That's the first Lego brick. All right, there we go. I don't know why they started 3000. 3001. Yeah. But that's it. Yep. So, book. This is fancy. One thing we didn't mention, this is sort of amazing. Yeah, we've, we've upgraded our covers. You couldn't do that before. Right, and don't go buying the old books expecting these covers to yeah. be like this because the we're old slowly phasing these in with previous books. Right, because we do have a stockpile of our originals. But this is like some kind of crazy. It's a plastic tear, kind of. tear proof plastic. So mm -hmm. if you have a cover and you and you do like this and like pick your book up by the cover, and then you'll notice over time the don't cover pick will. Don't your book up like yeah. that. Even with this, I, we don't recommend. Yeah, we don't recommend it. But <laughs> the cover will give way. It's just cardstock. These are like a new fancy yeah. plastic. Um, so these will be pretty resistant to that. If right. You, we're hoping. Yeah. We're hoping. This is and they're hoping it won't scratch too badly. This is a new thing for us. Yeah. So you guys are going to have to play test it. Give us some feedback. 
um, sticker sheet. It does come with a book. It's vinyl. They're, they're high quality vinyl stickers. Mm -hmm. uh, almost everything you're going to need. Um, we didn't, you know, because the book is basically general models. You don't have every every you know, printed element recreated as, uh, recreated as a sticker. We have most. Right. Um, just about everything you're going to need. Yeah. It'll still look wonderful. Um, you can make the models as, as they are. And of course, Brickmania does plan on releasing supplemental sticker, sticker packs in mm -hmm. the future. Absolutely. Yeah, and this is a highly, highly anticipated book. Um, you know, we've been working on this for a very long time. Uh, and we're super excited to finally have this thing released. Uh, so this is jam-packed with, uh, obviously, a ton right. of models. And this, this is coming out Friday. Um, if you, you know, basically, what I, one word of caution is that we know that this is going to be a popular book. Mm -hmm. It might take a few days to ship them all because when we have an important release like this, sometimes we get flooded with more orders yeah. than our, our customer service team can handle right away. So yeah. give, give them some patience. If you order it over the weekend, um, it might be shipped on Monday, right. Tuesday. That's only for new releases. Of course, if you're watching this video a couple of weeks after the fact, that doesn't mean anything. Right. We'll have books in stock. Yeah, we're trying to we're going to try and keep this in stock as much as we can. It batches will sell out occasionally, but we plan on bringing it back uh, for the indefinite future, right? Right, and then they yeah, it'll be in print pretty much all the time. We will do a a, a perfect bound version for the the collectors who like to have the nice spines in their in their, in their book collections. So, yeah, super exciting book. Um, any other things you want to point out? No, get them while you can. Yeah. You're not going to be able to get it on Amazon. I mean, we're basically, at, at this point, we can barely keep up with demand for these, so we're not going to give them to, to anyone else. The only, only way you're going to get it is go to brickmania.com or one of our official resellers, um, so Brickismo, um, et cetera. Cool. Very cool. Um, yeah, again, super exciting release here. We are all very proud of this thing. Uh, cool project that we've been working on for a while. So for more information on how you can get this, brickmania.com. Um, with that, I think that's the episode. That's the episode. Right, Thanks thank for watching. You. Thank you.